wasn't for the cross we wouldn't be here I thank and praise God how he went to the cross for my sins for your sin it was down at the cross down at the cross where I said your died down where for cleansing from sin I cried the blood applied, singing glory to his name, oh singing glory to his name, precious name.
There's no better feeling than having carried along a heavy load. Amen. And take a moment, a break, and lay that burden down. Amen. I've been a summertime construction laborer and had to carry doors up eight flights of stairs. Amen. And when you lay that burden down, amen, it felt good. But spiritually... But spiritually, amen, before you came to Jesus, there was a load that you were carrying on your back. It may not have been at the forefront of your conscience, but I can remember the day that I was birthed name of the Lord Jesus Christ when I went down in a watery grave of baptism all of a sudden every weight every single oppression of the past was lifted amen and what a glorious thing that it is to have your burdens amen taken away hallelujah hallelujah praise God Jesus said, come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. I thank God for the rest, amen, of laying down my burdens. Amen. I don't see any prayer requests up here tonight. Amen. That must mean that everybody's life is perfect. You have no problems. Amen. We know that that's not true. Amen. But what we do know is that God is good. Amen. His power is in the house here tonight. Amen. Let's pray for our nation. Amen. I don't know if you've read about it. It is not making headline news. But tomorrow is a very significant day in world finance. Amen. They're, OPEC, Russia, and China are getting together. And they're going to have a meeting about the petrodollar. Amen. And if they choose to go away from the United States dollar as the world standard for, for purchasing oil, it's bad news for the United States. 
and it's getting no press, amen, but it's, it's this very significant day. We also have a significant day coming up in the next two weeks. The Supreme Court of the United States is going to vote, uh, is going to make a, 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 they're going to make a verdict on same-sex marriage. Amen. If they allow that on a national level, amen, we have become Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. It's time to have revival, church. Amen. It's time to pray like we've never prayed for lost souls. It's time to care about people like you've never cared. Amen. Because when that happens, God is going to allow His judgment to fall. I don't know when it will happen. It's not a question of if, it's when that judgment will fall on our great nation. Amen. So we've got a lot to pray for, church. Amen. We want to pray that every single chair in this building is filled with a hungry soul. Amen. We've prayed about it, but now it's time to pray and go out and compel them. Amen. Anybody have a need here tonight you'd like to make known? Amen. We serve an awesome, awesome God. Amen. So let's take these needs here together. Ask Him to minister to our church. Lord, thank You for Your goodness. Thank You, God, for Your grace. Thank You, Lord, for the love that You have shown this church and, God, Your people. Lord, it's a wonderful place to be in the house of God. Thank You for lifting my burdens. Thank You, God, for cleansing my heart and my life from sin. Thank You, God, for being a very present help in a time of need. Thank You, Lord, for the abundant mercies every single day morning by morning God new mercies come into my life and God we're asking you and we're beseeching you for our nation God we live truly in perilous times let the power of God have its way in our midst God you're going to provide for us no matter what happens financially but Lord we want you God to, to save the lost God to reach out through us and save this city our friends, our families, our co workers, our neighbors. God, we've got to have revival. Lord, direct our nation. God, we're in your hands. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. You can turn it whithersoever you would. I'm asking you, God, to have your way in your people's midst. And God, here tonight, open our ears and our hearts to receive your precious word. God, we give you the thanks for all that you're doing. And most of all, God, give us the spirit to follow you no matter where your spirit leads. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's thank him, church. He touched me. Oh, he touched me.
Amen. Lift your hands and give him praise. Thank you for the touch tonight, God. Thank you for touching me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for cleansing me, God. Hallelujah. I'm grateful for your power. I'm grateful for your touch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. He touched me. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for that touch tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That one day he picked you up and he turned your life around. He said your sins are as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered against us again. We've got a right to praise him. We've got a reason to praise him. Thank you for your touch tonight, Jesus. I love you. I lift you up. I glorify your mighty name. Thank you tonight, God. Thank you for your touch. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. We're going to receive our offering tonight. Brother Daryl's getting prepared to come. And as he's coming, just want to quickly remind you that Gather is coming up. Amen. And uh, everybody know what Gather is? Maryland, D.C. District uh, Family Camp. Amen. And it's going to be held just right down the street in Largo at Greater Morning Star Church. I think it's Bishop Johnson, if I'm not mistaken, is the pastor. Amen. And that will be, um, I don't have my calendar. <laughs> yeah, the 16th through the uh yeah, 16th through the 18th, I think, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So what I was trying to get at, we won't have church that Thursday, so you can go and be a part of that meeting. Amen. Praise God. And I haven't got a new bulletin made yet, but it will be coming. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, the week of the 16th, there will not be a Thursday night service, so you can go and be a part of that service. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Come right ahead, Brother Daryl. Amen. We're going to give to the Lord tonight. Amen. Following that week will be youth camp. Amen. For all of our junior and senior youth campers. Amen. And then see Brother Valerie if you need more information on that. Praise God. Amen. Let's stand and pray. They will sing a song and you can march and come and give. Amen. Father, I thank you tonight for your blessings. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you touched us. Hallelujah. And you cleansed us and you've washed us and you made us white as snow. Thank you for your touch tonight, God. Thank you for your power in our life. I just pray that you would bless this offering tonight. Meet every need. Open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon your people. I I pray it all in Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. 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 God bless you as you come and give tonight. Amen. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away.
God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's just sing it again. Praise God. Fly away, oh glory. Fly away. When I die. Hallelujah, fly and by. I fly away. give him praise Amen. hallelujah lord it isn't gonna be too much Thank longer Jesus. and we're gonna fly away we give you praise honor and glory tonight hallelujah no chains have us bound we are free by the blood of the lamb hallelujah hallelujah i'm looking for that great day when that trumpet sounds hallelujah come lord jesus come Hallelujah. You ready to go tonight? If he comes tonight, would you be ready to go? Goodbye, world. Goodbye. I'm going to fly away. Amen. Clap your hands unto the Lord one more time. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I normally start out with a scripture, but tonight I'm not going to start out with a scripture. I'm going to tell you a story. But it's a Bible story. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know about the prophet Hosea? Amen. A couple of you. All right. Praise God. Well, the thing that we normally associate with uh, the prophet Hosea is that the woman he married a man he married the Bible calls her a harlot we would say a prostitute so here is a prophet of God but God instructs him to marry Gomer who is a harlot or a prostitute and I don't know about you but for a long time I just couldn't wrap my mind around this thing and, and I'll be honest, I even still have difficulty thinking about what the purpose was. But hopefully, one of the purposes we can share with you tonight. Amen. The great thing that we know about Hosea is that Hosea obeys God and he marries Gomer the harlot. And he didn't really, I don't believe, love her when he first married her. He more or less married her in obedience to God. There's your first key right there. Becoming obedient to God. Amen. You don't have to keep praying, Brother Brad, but thank you. Amen. This is going to be a long story. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I want to be obedient to God, don't you? Amen. I've had a lot of folks tell me, well, when God convicts me, I'll do such and such. Well, that's nice to say that. But the scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. God honors obedience. And be quite honest with you, lots of folks, when they come to know the Lord, they don't really know why they must be baptized in Jesus' name. They can't quote all the Bible references to, and can be a scholar about the subject. And most of them probably don't know all the scriptures about getting the Holy Ghost. 
But what they do know is that they are a sinner in need of salvation. And the Bible says if they repent, I'm going to cross some of your theology right now. Praise God. Because, you know, the Bible says if they repent, they're a candidate to be baptized. There is no other prerequisite to being baptized than repentance. And so, you know, I've heard people say, well, I don't think they've really repented. Or I don't think this, or I don't think that. Well, it's really not up to you and I. It's up to God and up to that individual. Amen. I don't know their hearts. I'm not God. And nothing says that they got to go through a 12-week Bible study before I baptize them. I'm just clarifying some stuff. Amen. Do I want them to know more about God? Yes. Do I want them to hide the word in their heart? Yes. Amen. But if they tell me they have repented, then the scripture says they're ready to be baptized. Amen. And so out of their obedience to the word of God, they are buried in his name. And the Bible says they come up a new creature. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I couldn't quote you all the Bible verses when I got baptized. I was relatively young, but I did it in obedience. I do know one thing. When I came up out of that water, I felt clean. I felt revigorated. I felt something that I'd never felt before. Hallelujah. To God be the glory, and so it should be. Hallelujah. And then God promised to fill me with the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I think sometimes we leave that last part out. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Just like the wind blew on the day of Pentecost, when you receive the Holy Ghost, there's going to be a sound. Hallelujah. God is going to send forth a sound from your lips or from your voice. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I couldn't control it. It would just, it would just him flowing through me. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so all I'm trying to say tonight is I did all those things out of an act of obedience to the word of God. I later, the Bible says, add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge, and it goes on. And so I later learned why I did some of the things that I did. But originally, I did it out of obedience. What I'm trying to tell us tonight is there is a blessing in obeying God. There is a blessing in being obedient to God. There is a blessing of saying, yes, Lord, I may not know why, and I may know not when and how come and all that other stuff, but I'm just going to do it because you said to do it. Hallelujah. And the blessing comes. That's how Hosea was. He didn't understand why God wanted him to marry Gomer. Amen. But God told him to marry this harlot, and he did what God told him to do. And then, I believe, what happened was he later, through the process of time, he fell in love with her. You read the book of Hosea, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Amen. He, through the process of time, when you begin to spend time with a person, amen, and especially if you're married, hopefully you're going to find something you like in that person. Hallelujah. Praise God. But they lived together as man and a wife. She bare him three children, and all seemed to be well and good. But then suddenly, Gomer started thinking about her old life again. Amen. And she started thinking about how life wasn't as interesting in the relationship. Hello, I'm preaching now. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're all starry-eyed when you get married, and after you've been married a while, you'd like to kill the guy. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. But she was all starry-eyed in the beginning, and things were going well, and they had three kids, and, and all of a sudden, she started thinking and reminiscing about her old life. Amen. And, and that is the beginning of her downfall, because when the devil wants to attack you and I, he will begin to conjure up thoughts in our minds. 
Amen. And, and begin to make us wonder, well, what would it have been like if this would have happened? And what would it have been like if that would have happened? Amen. And so pretty soon, Gomer, she makes the decision to go back and to return to the streets again and to become a woman of the night one more time. What does she do? She adorns herself with all the, her jewels and earrings and she goes out into the street and she seeks out some of her former lovers. Amen. And she lives a life of fantasy for a while and there were parties and there were friends and she was having a good time and everything was fun for a little while. But guess what? Sin does have pleasure for a season, the Bible says. Amen. But sooner or later, the fun is going to fade away. Amen. The facade is going to fade away. And so her life begins to deteriorate at a rapid pace. And things aren't going so well for Gomer any longer. And soon, amen, her, her age begins to catch up with her. Amen. And her beauty begins to fade. And her laughter is only a dense, distant memory. She, doesn't, she isn't full of joy anymore. And her laughter has gone. And her friends don't come to see her anymore. And she becomes penniless. And she becomes broke. She becomes homeless and filled with all kinds of loneliness. Amen. Hallelujah. But there's a man of God that was called by God to marry this woman. And he had fallen in love with her. So what does, what does he do? Amen. He goes and he pays all her debts off. Gomer had fallen to such a place that she had fallen into great debt and even become a slave. Amen. She was too poor to buy food, and she no longer was useful. She had been sold into slavery, and she had not become useful to her master. And so her master then takes her to the auction block to sell her to the highest bidder. Amen. A long way from the, the parties and the fun and the good times she was having. And so what happens, Hosea finds out about Gomer's predicament and he arrives at the auction block and he has taken every asset that he owns. Amen. The Bible says 15 pieces of silvers and one and a half homers of barley. And if I can put it this way, Homer, or I'm sorry, uh, Gomer, by this time, has really been reduced to a slave status. And we might even call her a hag. She was in despair. Her face was wrinkled. Her eyes had lost their luster. And she was in pretty bad shape. Her clothes were ragged and soiled. And she has no shoes. And her whole body shakes with apprehension. And she comes eye to eye with Hosea's eyes. Hallelujah. The man that had married her. Here she is. Nobody wants her. She feels like she's good for nothing. And Hosea isn't dissuaded by her appearance whatsoever. And he looks her straight in the eye. And guess what he does? He pays the price to buy her back. He pays the price and he takes her home with his intentions of restoring her to her rightful place. Amen. 
So what does he do? He is able to do this. Why? Because he truly loves Gomer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I don't know about you, but probably not too many of us would want to marry a prostitute. Whether they be male or female. Praise God. And especially one that had already spent the majority of their lives on the street. And was in pretty rough condition. Amen. But because of love and because of what God told the man of God, he went and he purchased her at that auction block that day. So I, I scratch my head and say, God, why do you put this story in the Bible? Amen. It's really not a story we really want to hear. Amen. If I'm honest, I don't really want to hear this kind of a story. But then I got to do a little bit of soul searching. God, if you told me to do that, would I do it? But I believe tonight that God has put this example into his word because he wants us to understand what unconditional love really is all about. Agape love. We talk about it all the time. We talk about love. We talk about agape love that God showed us. But now the shoe is on the other feet. We claim to be born again. We claim to be men and women of God. Amen. We claim to have the Holy Ghost. Would we really do what God told Hosea to do? We would probably find a lot of excuses not to do it. Amen. But I believe tonight that this story is in the Bible because, amen, it's a story not only that talks about agape love, but it also gives us an example of one man's love for one lost soul. One man's love for one lost soul. And it also exemplifies to you and I tonight that Jesus loved us. How many know that? How many are grateful that God loves you tonight? He died on that old rugged cross for you and for me. I didn't deserve his love. I didn't deserve his mercy. I didn't deserve his grace. But because of love, he went to Calvary. He endured the pain and the shame, the nail prints in his hands. He, he was despised and rejected of men. He was ridiculed. He was spat upon. He was beaten. But he did it because he loved you and he loved me. Praise God. Give God some praise. I don't know about you, but I was spiritually ugly when God found me. I didn't have too much to offer him. I wasn't much to look at. But he found me. And he empowered me and he forgave me, wrapped his arms around me, put a coat of righteousness upon me. I'm not saying that I'm perfect by any stretch of the means tonight, but I thank God that I got a new name written down in heaven. I thank God that there is a robe upon me, that I am a child of the king tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank him for his love. I thank him for all that he's done. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for where he brought you from. Where did God find you? Hallelujah. You didn't deserve his mercy. You didn't deserve his grace. You don't deserve his power tonight. But because of his love, he, hallelujah, he has poured out his power into you and I. Hallelujah. And he's forgiven us of our soul. Thank God for his love tonight. Thank God for his love tonight.
I know I haven't given you a topic yet, but what I'm talking to you about tonight, amen, is the very heartbeat of God. Loving the lost. Jesus loves the lost. Hallelujah. Jesus loves the lost. Now, I believe this story is put in the Bible for us to realize how much he loves the lost. Hallelujah. He loves the lost. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've been going through. It doesn't matter if the world thinks you're useless and hopeless and helpless. Jesus still loves you. Hallelujah. Jesus loves every one of us. Hallelujah. Amen. We might have even been out there on the street somewhere, but he still loved you and me. Amen. Praise God. Give him a clap offering of praise. So I believe tonight that we as Christians, we got to understand and we've got to take to heart the things that God values. I've been taught hate sin, but love the sinner. Hate the sin, but love the sinner. We've got to learn to hate what God hates, but love what God loves. God hates I believe with all my heart, God hates homosexuality. But he still loves the homosexual. Amen. He hates the sin, but he loves the person. He went to the cross for them just like he did for you and me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So lest we forget where we came from, let's not pick out and say that person can be saved and that person can be saved and that person can be saved and that person can't be saved. God is able to save anybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to get off course here a little bit, but when Jesus told the disciples to go fishing, he didn't say just reel in the trout. Amen. But whatever kind of fish was in the net, he said, haul the fish in. Hallelujah. Amen. And as you know that Bible story, it was more than they could pull to shore. I said, we got to learn to love what God loves and hate what God hates. Amen. And not think that we are better than other people. Amen. Because we've been born again and had, had the mercy of God shed abroad in our hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus taught that the value of a soul was more precious than the whole world. The most important thing to Jesus was a soul. Amen. He breathed into us and the Bible says we became living souls. Every soul that he's breathed into, he loves. And he died for on that old rugged cross. When we talk about understanding Jesus' values, when we see him in the very beginning of his ministry, we see him, what does he do? He immediately begins to seek and to call men to follow him. So who's he call? He calls Simon and Andrew and James and John and Philip and Nathaniel. They were all amongst the ones that were first called. Amen. Hallelujah. And during his final hours while he was suffering excruciating pain upon the cross, he ministered to the lost thief and gave him the promise of eternity. Hallelujah. So what did we see? In the very beginning, the very first thing that he did, he called Simon Peter, save the lost. And the very last thing he does before he gives up his last breath on the cross, he says to the thief hanging on the cross, this day shall you be with me in paradise. Oh, hallelujah. An example to you and I tonight that the most important thing in our Christian walk is to exemplify him. Hallelujah. And to be a witness and to be a lighthouse. To value what God values and to hate what God hates. Hallelujah. And God loves souls tonight. And he wants us, I believe, in this last day and hour before his second coming to get a heartbeat for the things that he loves. To get a heartbeat for the souls that are lost and dying and 
than going to hell without a hope in God. Oh God, give us, a, give us a desire to win the loss. Let me not just say, I've got the Holy Ghost, I'm going to make it in. Let me not just be worried about my house, if you will. But God, help me to be worried about that man or woman I work with on the job or, or that person at the bank that I see on a weekly basis or, or somebody at school. I don't know where it is, but God has allowed your path to cross an individual, not just so you can keep him to yourself, but he wants you to share him with this world. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Philip was directed by an angel to leave a great revival in Samaria and go to Gaza and to preach to just one man in Acts 8. One man. That's how much he loves souls. Hallelujah. And the man to whom Philip was directed to, amen, was thirsting for some living water, amen, but he was plagued with confusion. He was plagued with doubt, hallelujah, but guess what? If you're hungry, God will send a man to you. Praise God, God will send a man to you. Jesus tells us in Luke 15 and 7, he says that there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. There's joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. Hallelujah. We sometimes, well, hallelujah, we see them come down to the altar on Sunday morning. Amen. And if we're not careful, we'll say, well, they didn't repent or they, they didn't really cry a tear or they didn't do this or they didn't. We don't know. Hallelujah. Amen. They could be down there and all the angels of heaven could be rejoicing because they've repented of their sins. He gives us the parable in Luke there, and he says it was not a fortune that was lost. It was only one coin that was lost, but they tore up the whole house to find that one lost coin. Hallelujah. It wasn't the whole flock of sheep that was lost, but it was one little lamb that was lost, and they left the 90 and 9 and went in search of that one lost lamb. Hallelujah. It wasn't the whole city that was lost, but it was one son that was lost. Hallelujah. Kill the fatted calf and let's have a party. My son who was lost has come home. Oh, hallelujah. What am I saying tonight? If you got somebody that God has dealt with you about and God has laid them upon your heart, it's time to pray for them like you've never prayed for them before. Don't just let the devil have a heyday with them. Hallelujah. I believe that every person that is saved, somebody prayed for them. Somebody prayed for you. Somebody prayed for me. Somebody got a hold of God and said, don't let him or her be lost, God. Save their soul. Jesus ministered to Zacchaeus, one man. Jesus ministered to Nicodemus, one man. The woman at the well of Samaria, the Bible says Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. Why? Because he knew there was going to be a woman standing at that well that needed an encounter with him. God will go out of his way to find you. Hallelujah. I'm glad he went out of his way to find me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He cares about each and every one of us. Hallelujah. And James chapter 2, verse 2 and 3 teaches that the poor man, amen, in the vile raiment is just as valuable to God as the man with the gold ring and godly apparel upon him. Hallelujah. What am I saying? Souls are important to God. Hallelujah. God does not care who they are. He doesn't care what they look like. He doesn't care what status they come from. Hallelujah. What their social status is, what their level of intellect is, what color their skin is, what their language is. All he knows is that he died on a cross that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly. Hallelujah. God, forgive me. Hallelujah. If I prejudge or predetermine anybody that comes into this church, amen. Oh, Lord, let me love souls the way you love souls. Help me to love souls, God, the way that you love souls. Help me, oh, God, to value souls the way that you value souls. Praise God. For every soul was a priceless treasure to him. Praise God. So the gomers of this world are the people to whom Jesus went to Calvary for. Hallelujah. 
He purchased their freedom, praise God, on an old rugged cross. Hallelujah. And these are all just biblical examples to demonstrate it's going to cost you something to be a soul winner. I said it's going to cost you and me something to be a soul winner. To be a soul winner, we don't do it naturally. We might think we do, but we don't really do it naturally. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if the opportunity comes along and the person's standing right in our face, yeah, most of us will be a witness. But when's the last time you went out of your way to be a witness to somebody? When was the last time you were driving down the road and, and you were headed and you had a place in mind, your destination, and God told you to go someplace else, and you said, okay, God, I'm going. Right. No, Moses, that's not you, God. I got some place to be. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. God tells you to go buy a, a gallon of milk and give it to your neighbor. Oh, you got to be crazy. You don't do those things anymore, God. Hello. Praise God. Driving down the street, and I know, I, I, I'm just throwing it out there tonight. I'm not saying that I do it all. I'm sure I've drove by some folks myself, and not happy to admit it, but it's the truth anyhow. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody had a flat tire. God says, stop and help them, help them fix that flat tire. Oh, no, that can't be you, God. I got some place to be. Amen. All I'm saying is Jesus was willing to go to Samaria because he knew there was a lady waiting at a well. He went out of his way. And what I'm trying to suggest to you and I tonight, if you want to be what God wants you to be, I said, if you want to be what God wants you to be, God wants you to be a soul winner. Hallelujah. And if you want to be the kind of soul winner that he wants you to be, you're going to have to be willing to let your schedule be upset. You're going to have to be willing to go out of your way in order to be a light that shines in darkness. Hallelujah. I know it's not popular in our world tonight, but can I tell you that if we would have let the light shine through us to that degree that we would begin to shine like never before because nobody wants to go out of the way. It's all about us. Hallelujah. But if we could get the mind of God in us where I, you and I could say, God, direct me to a hungry heart. Direct me to a lost soul. Help me to be a witness. Help me to be a lighthouse. Praise God. There's an old hymn that goes something like this. There are souls in sin which we fail to win just because we lack desire. And the thing we need, truly need indeed, is the Pentecostal fire. Hallelujah. There are souls in sin that we fail to win just because we lack desire. Can I tell you the best place for you to get desire tonight is coming back to an old-fashioned altar and bowing our knees down here and saying, God, forgive me, help me, and do me with power from on high. Hallelujah. Fill me up again with the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you, if we would spend a little more time on our knees and our time talking to Jesus and being renewed in the Holy Ghost, amen, we would get up because we would have fresh desire and we would have fresh vision and we would have fresh purpose and we would have fresh power and we wouldn't be wondering God where are you in my life he's right here he's waiting for you and I to bow our knee he's waiting for you and I to say Lord not my will but thine be done he's waiting for us to come and drink from the well that never runs dry he's waiting for us to be a shining light in a darkened world to go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. Hallelujah. He's waiting to endue us with power. That's what he said. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You've got, if you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got everything that you need to go out and affect the world in which you live. 
And we sometimes walk around in this world and we let the devil hit us on this side of the head and we let the devil hit us on that side of the head and we let the devil in the front door and we let him have dominion in our homes and in our finances and in our lives. It's time to get the tenacity of the Holy Ghost. It's time to get a fresh burden. It's time to get a fresh <laughs> enduring spirit within you that's a devil. You're not going to steal and plunder in my house any longer I rebuke you in the name of Jesus <laughs> hallelujah who praise God a passion a desire to win the lost I somehow fear and I'm talking about myself. There's times I feel like I've even lost that passion. And I pray, oh God, stir me up. Stir me up, God. Help me to have a compassion for the lost. Let me not lose sight of why we are here tonight. We are not here just to have a, a church service. We are not here to go through a ritual or a routine. But God filled us with the Holy Ghost. That we would have a passion and a love for the things that he loves and a hate for the things that he hates. A passion for the lost. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some years ago, a woman in Columbia, South Carolina, she lost two sons in an automobile, automobile accident. She was a member of one of our churches there and read the story in the newspaper and it went or I'm sorry uh, uh, one of the members of the local church there read the story of her tragedy in the newspaper and went to meet this woman to try to offer her some comfort in her time of sorrow and grief they were strangers but this godly woman sat with this grieving mother and prayed with her and told her all about Jesus. The name of the lady was Sable Burwell. May not mean anything to you, but after the funeral, Sable came to the church and she heard Pastor Scott Smith preach and she got born again of the water and of the spirit. And she became very excited about this man named Jesus that she never had known before. In the following months, Sable became the greatest soul winner to have membership in that local church. It all, be, it all happened because one godly woman decided to go out of her way to minister to someone in their time of need, someone that she didn't even know. Hallelujah. God used that one godly woman to win another woman who became one of the greatest soul winners that church has ever known. What am I saying? I'm saying you don't know who it is you're telling about the Lord. Praise God. Lift your hands and give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Genesis chapter 30 and verse 1, Rachel cried, Give me children or else I die. Amen. Giving life to her was more important than just living, giving life. Life had no meaning for her unless she could produce children. Praise God. And God's people should have that same kind of desire in the spirit. It's not good enough that we just live in this thing. Oh, God, help me to... The Bible says when Zion travails, that's the church. When the church travails or Zion travails, sons and daughters are going to be born. 
When we get a burden, when we get a desire to win the loss, that's when sons and daughters are going to be born. If we're just happy coming to the church, we're just happy going through a ritual and a formality, nothing's going to happen. But the day we decide to love what God loves and to hate what God hates, amen, and to get down on our hands and knees and to travail before the Lord, give me children, give me children. The church has got to come to a place where we will bow our knees and call on him and say, God, hallelujah, we've got to have life. We've got to have children in the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. We've got to, I feel a burden for our own kids in this assembly. I'll just be honest with you. I am disturbed in my spirit because our kids don't seem to have any desire for the things of God. Now, don't misunderstand me. I thank God for Brother Valerie. I thank him for what he's doing in Sunday school. But can I tell you, Mom and Dad, Sunday school can't turn your kids around. It starts at home. It starts at home. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, we pray for them. Yes, we'll try to teach them to do the right thing. But you know what's going to turn that kid around? You get down on your hands and knees and you travail before God until God turns your son or daughter around. Hallelujah. I've seen it time, time and again. When mom and dad will travail, guess what? Something's going to happen. When the church travails, sons and daughters are going to be born. But as long as we just sit idly by and let the devil come in one door and out the back door, he's going to ransack our house all day long. Mm, mm -mm. Give me children or else I die, she said. Did you know that when God created us, he created us to procreate? Amen? Amen. Just the natural part of living. God created us to procreate. He created plants. He created animals. He created the birds in the air. He created every living thing, including you and I being human beings. And we all were created to reproduce. Amen. Praise God. So when we look at the book of Acts, Jesus said, Hallelujah. He's, he tells us that God designs our witness and our desire to win the lost. Ye have received power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you to do what? To be a witness. To be a witness. To be a witness. Isaiah 43 and 10 records God's dir- directive to Israel. He said, ye are my witnesses. We are his witnesses tonight. Hallelujah. If people, hallelujah, with truth, refrain from telling people that don't know truth. Amen. How shall the sinner know the way to salvation if we never tell them? Amen. How would you feel when you stand before God on judgment day and your neighbor or your coworker or your friend pointed their finger at you and would say, why didn't you tell me? I believe that can happen. We have spent so much time trying to fit into the world. To not to be ridiculed or laughed at or mocked or made fun of. But guess what? We don't fit in this world. God never intended for you and I to fit in the world. He intended for us to upset this world. Your co-workers should not feel comfortable telling their filthy jokes around you. You and I should not be laughing at the rudeness and the crudeness of some of their language and some of their stories and some of their jokes. We are to be a shining light in a darkened world. We are to represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I pray to God that when you walk into the lunchroom, amen, that they feel uncomfortable telling their filthy stories in your presence. 
When I was in Bible school, not to pat myself on the back, but I wasn't the only one that did this, but there was a lot of sinners. I was working at, a, at, at something like a Home Depot for a while, amen, and we'd walk into the lunchroom, and man, they'd be telling about getting drunk and having their parties and, and running with this one and that one, and oh, what a great time we, they were having on Friday night, and it was Monday, and they were all hungover, and we'd walk in, oh, get our Bibles out, lay it down on the lunch table, begin to read the Bible and just eat our lunch. Guess what? It cleared the room real quick. Didn't have to say one word. Just open up this book in their presence and they feel uncomfortable. And it's not against the law to read your Bible at lunchtime. All I'm saying is you can be a light if you want to be a light. Praise God. Oh, God, help us to be a light. Amen. Hannah desired to have a child, and she cried, and she wept in her grief, and she prayed through her tears at, at the temple altar, and she made a solemn vow to God if he would grant her a son, she would give him back to the Lord. So her strong desire drove her to a place of desperation. And you know the rest of the story. Samuel was born, who, who was to prophesy and crown two of the kings of Israel, David and Saul, to God be the glory. All I'm saying tonight is when we get desperate for a move of God, when we get desperate, amen, to be used of God, when we get desperate for an encounter, guess what? God's going to show up. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you tonight. You've got all that you need living within you if you've got the Holy Ghost to be a soul winner. All you need is desire to do it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All you need is desire to do it. So God told Hosea, go out, find this woman, find this woman who's an adulteress, find this woman who served other gods, find this woman who loved her wine. And take her unto thyself. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that God loves the undesirables just as much as he loves any one of us. Hallelujah. So desire is the motivating force that will move us and propel us into action. Hallelujah. I've got a whole lot more I want to say about this, but for the sake of time, I'm going to close and maybe do part two on another Thursday night. But I feel with all my heart that God is trying to motivate us as a church not to be satisfied with what's going on in our walks with God, not to be satisfied with our individual experiences with God. But I believe God is constantly churning up his spirit within us because the days are short. There's a lost generation. Hallelujah. There are lost people all around us every day. And, and his soul aches and his soul yearns for us to get a desire. Hallelujah. He said, we are his witnesses. He said, go out into the, to the fields. The fields don't say they're yet four months and then comes a harvest. He said, yay. Hallelujah. The fields are already white and ready to harvest. There's a harvest out there. There's a 
harvest in your back door. There's a harvest across your street. There's a harvest on your job. There's a harvest at the grocery store. There's a harvest at the bank. All I'm saying is, oh God, use us each and every one. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not trying to condemn anybody here, but I'm preaching to myself tonight. God, help me to get a burden for the lost. Oh God, help me to have a greater desire to see souls saved. Oh God, let me not be satisfied for us just to come on a Sunday morning or a Thursday night and sing three songs and take up an offering and preach a little sermon and go home and say we've had church. Oh, I want to see some souls saved. Hallelujah. When we get a desire to win the law, when we get down on our hands and knees and we begin to cry out and call on God and say, God, give us children, God. God, give us children. God, give us children. Let the church birth children, God. Hallelujah. We've got to have children, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I believe with all my heart God wants to bring them forth, but he's waiting uh, on us to travail before him. He's waiting on us to say, hallelujah, make it happen, Jesus. Make it happen, Jesus. Make it happen, Lord. Change my heart. Change my mind. Change my soul. Help me to do what you have called me to do. Help me to be, God, what you want me to be. Give us life, God. Give us life, God. Give us life, I pray, oh God. Breathe that breath of refreshing down upon us. Would you stand with me tonight? Just lift your hands to heaven. Let's just ask God to use us, each and every one. Lord, in the name of Jesus tonight, you know every heart in this house, I pray. God, we are filled with your spirit. We thank you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for what you're doing in our midst, but we pray tonight, God, help me and each and every one of us to be a witness and a lighthouse. Help us to bring forth children, God. Help the church to bring forth children. Let your name be lifted up. Let your name be glorified. Help me to be a living example known and read of all men for your name's sake. Help me to be endued with your power. Help me to love the things that you love. Help me to hate the things that you hate, God. Help me to be a light that shines in darkness. Oh, God, I pray even this week, Lord, before Sunday morning that you would give every single one of us an opportunity to be that witness and to be that lighthouse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help us to share you with somebody. Help us to share you with somebody. Help us, oh Lord, to be willing to go out of our way like you went out of your way to the lady at Samaria. Help me to be willing, oh God, and not so endued with my own agenda that I can't do something for you. I love you tonight, God. I'm grateful for your power in my life. I'm grateful for where you brought me from, Lord. I thank you for your love and I thank you for your mercy. And I thank you for your goodness. Have your will in our lives, Lord. Have your way in our soul. In Jesus' name, clap your hands to him. Give him praise tonight. Give him praise tonight. Give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. 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 Give us children, Jesus. Give us children, Jesus. Give us children, we pray, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Direct our steps. Direct our way, I pray, God. Direct our conversation aright. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I ask you to bless each and every one of us tonight. Hallelujah. Bless your people. They're faithful, God. Hallelujah. They're good people, Lord. I ask your blessings upon every saint of God tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you would direct their steps and open the doors and the windows of opportunity for them, that they might lift up your name, that they might proclaim your name, that they might, hallelujah, bring somebody with them even this Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Help us, oh Lord, each and every 
every one of us to be a soul winner. Help us to bring somebody with us to church. Help us not to be content to come alone, oh God, but help us to be about our master's business. Use us for your glory, we pray, Lord. Not our will, but thine be done. We give you all the praise in your mighty name. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Clap your hands one more time to the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen.